the fascinating history of Dorothy's ruby slippers. Even if you've never seen the 1939 Wizard of Oz film, odds are you're familiar with the film's legendary ruby slippers. Worn by Dorothy Gale throughout her time in Oz, the bright red shoes are as memorable as the yellow brick road. But did you know that the now iconic shoe was meant to look entirely different? In The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, the best-selling book the film is based off of, Dorothy Gale's magical footwear is referred to as the silver shoes. That's right, silver. The film made the change to red and wound up creating their own little piece of film history. The Many Adaptations of Oz Over the years, there have been numerous films inspired by the Oz book series. This includes multiple silent film versions, 1939's The Wizard of Oz, 1972's Journey Back to Oz, 1978's The Wiz, 1985's The Return of Oz, 2005's The Muppets' Wizard of Oz, and most recently, 2013's Oz the Great and Powerful. Most of these adaptations stray from the source material in one way or another, but interestingly enough, the majority actually keep the silver shoes. I'll be it in various styles that fit the tone of their respective film. That includes sparkly silver high heels in The Wiz and a jeweled Manolo stiletto in The Muppets Adaptation. The exceptions to this are, of course, the 1939 film and The Return of Oz, the film's unofficial sequel, which required studio approval before they were able to use the red shoe in their film. Everything comes with a price. MGM bought the film rights to the novel for a whopping $75,000, one of the highest amounts at the time, and were immediately plagued with production woes, leading some to believe the movie was cursed. The film had over a dozen rewrites, was tied to five different directors, and was switching out principal cast members even after filming had begun. The decision to film in Technicolor, which was still uncommon in 1939, was expensive, complicated, and time-consuming, with the film costing the studio over $2.8 million to make. When it was first released, just a week before World War II officially began, it made $3 million, barely covering the cost to make it. Although it was critically acclaimed and went on to win two Academy Awards, it wasn't until decades later that the film finally began recouping its losses with the help of television and video. The expensive and difficult endeavor to film in Technicolor wasn't for naught, as it is a large part of what makes the film so memorable to this day. During production, they decided to take full advantage of the bright colors of Technicolor and change Dorothy's silver shoes to red, a decision credited to Noel Langley, one of the film's first screenwriters. The shoes themselves were created by costume designer Gilbert Adrian, who made several pairs of shoes for Garland and her stunt double to use throughout the film's production. The shoes were made of industry standard white pumps that were most likely dyed red. They had painted red soles, dark red sequins, and beaded bows. The pairs that were used for dancing had orange felt adhered to the bottom to muffle the sound of footsteps on the yellow brick road. Where are they now? Of the shoes created for the film, few survived production, with only four sets known about today. Three of these ruby slippers were acquired by Kent Warner, who found them in the MGM backlot while helping set up a wardrobe auction in 1970. He went on to sell the shoes in following years to various collectors. One of these pairs, which had been on display at the Judy Garland Museum in 2005, were stolen and were not recovered until 13 years later. Warner also found a rare pair of ruby slippers that were only used in screen tests. This pair featured a more elaborate design that included far more jewels and a curled toe. The pair never made it into the film and were rejected as they didn't fit the image the studio had for the character. These shoes were a part of late actress Debbie Reynolds' private collection until 2011, when they were sold for over $500,000. Many of the pairs that remain are in the hands of museums now, but because they're nearly 80 years old, they're undergoing rapid deterioration from aging. The tale of Dorothy's ruby slippers show how just one small change in a character's wardrobe can influence generations to come. Think about that the next time someone tells you that the costumes aren't as important as the story. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Bye!